parked my car through the keys in the front seat and just started walking around a city that I'd never been to before. And uh, after a couple of days, uh, the police picked me up and I ended up in a psychiatric facility for close to 40 days. And then I had some relatives down in Pennsylvania who were willing to take me in. Hi, I'm Mark Stevenson and I am Tim Connor's uncle. And damn proud to be Tim Connor's uncle. When the disease first settled in, the family was so unaware and had so little understanding of it. You were kind of on your own when you were at college. We started to get a grasp that we didn't understand this, but it obviously was very serious and that you needed family support. And, and we just decided that Lynn and I, out of the family, had the best physical arrangement for you to come and live with us for a while and give you a chance to get, get your feet underneath you and um, start a recovery process. You know, spending time with uh, my aunt and uncle uh, may have played a big part in why I even like started to like seek help. And uh, you, you know, when things kind of really kind of came off the wheels, came off the the train, whatever the train wreck that was uh, 2000, 2001. You know, them taking me in and and you know when I really wasn't doing well at all. Uh, made a real big difference in terms of just getting me on a, like a different path than I had been on. You just seem to uh, levitate yourself from one job to the next. Once that initial one was done, it was it seemed like it was almost effortless from our side of it. And then it seemed like you really hit your own, hit your, your stride there uh, when you started to work in the mental health field. And then, uh you know, work-wise, I've, uh, I've been working full-time as a peer specialist for a little over five years now. Because it was something that you had so much personal experience with. You also have a college education, uh, which helps that, you know, when you want to do something, you can read and write and function well. Hi, I'm Tim Connors. I've been a part of Montgomery County's Hearing Voices Network for 15 months. The support of people who share the voices experience is normalizing and healing. Our local Voices Network coordinator, Berta Britz, suggests Living with Voices by Marius Rahm as an alternative introduction to the hearing voices experience. Voices often come at us in an intrusive kind of way and can be overwhelming. So one of the things that the Hearing Voices Network approach does is it teaches us to change our relationship with our voices. So in order to build some distance and to build that relationship so you can change it. It helps to understand your voices and um, so voice profiling is a way that helps you to build some of that distance so you can relate in a different way to them. Often people are told that the voices are not real um, but you know one of the main tenets of this this movement is that the voices are real. And that's the, that's the beginning of healing, is to acknowledge the voices and that they're real. People are usually startled at first, you know, by voices, but then acknowledging that they're real. And instead of being, having an aggressive relationship with them, which so many people have found doesn't work, um, dialoguing, learning to dialogue and negotiate with them, and finally making peace with them. Listening to people's story, being an active listener, because it's about the story, not the disease. So as we go through this, the things that maybe you could take away from it are that it is possible for people to recover from mental illness or live with voices in a way that doesn't interfere with having a full and rich life in the community. Part of what we're doing today is also to educate people who do hear voices that there is help out there and that recovery doesn't necessarily mean having the voices going away completely. Stretch out your hand and understand.